What's going on, everybody? On today's show, it's playoff primer time. Who's got the great matchups? Who's got a tough schedule? That and the Thursday night breakdown. Check it out. Navy Federal is proud to serve over 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD veterans, and their families. You'll receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org slash footballers for more information or call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app. Message and data rates may apply. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Excited to be with you. Andy, Mike, and Jason back, the Fantasy Footballers. It's Wednesday. Jason's head bobbing with the music. Oh, I mean, the music's so good. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Is that new? Is that a new, a it new, is. A new song? It is. Oh, nice. Very nice. Every time I hear it, it's new. <laughs> <laughs> we've probably ha- we've probably got a what the 30 40 50 remixes in the in the archives oh, not from yeah. you but just from like the listeners over the years uh maybe like three <laughs> we no it's more than we've that. got some eight we've got some eight bit versions we do we have some uh, there was at least one person that did it in all horns we yes i, I think andy's right i think we've got 30 yeah a lot every there's guitar year, solo versions every year for listener league we get like 10 entries that are based around our song don't get insecure i mean yours is still the best oh no that's what i was gonna say the hard part about <laughs> remixing a masterpiece yeah when you come after the king mm-hmm. it's tough yeah good, it's difficult good don't luck, miss good luck tracing the mona lisa <laughs> hmm? tracing that's what i do i put the paper right up on that <laughs> no that's fine oh man picture hey i have a megalable update mega man yeah, we've got a Megalodon show coming this month, as always, leading uh, into the the Megalobowl. Thank you. No, Up- the Megalodon. There's only one. Well, let's get into the Megalobowl update. I wanted to take a look. We've got uh, a couple weeks left here before playoffs, and there were over 7,000 teams that mm. entered the Megalobowl. And there are currently 61 undefeated teams remaining. Impressive. And if you are in the Megala Bowl, you can head over to jointhefoot.com. You can see uh, we posted a huge update about how playoffs work and total points. And we'll have a winner soon. The top three from every league will go on. It's points-based, not necessarily records-based from that point forward. And rosters will be locked. So there's no, there's no moves you can make. Plan ahead. Yeah. So there were there were 491 leagues, 7,692 Foot Clan participants, and 61 undefeated teams remaining. And then I wanted to take a little look, see at what players are the most common on the undefeated teams. Number one, Christian McCaffrey is on 20 of those 61 undefeated teams. The Patriots defense mm-hmm. yeah. on 16 of them. Lamar Jackson's on 14 of them. Then it goes Mike Evans, Dalvin Cook, Cooper Cup, Russell Wilson, Leonard Fournette, and... Uh, oh! Well, goo 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 Yes, we have Darren Waller there as well. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Congrats to everybody who uh, is is in the running to move on and potentially become the ultimate megalobowl champ i mean that is an accomplishment 7600 plus teams and you're the champ yeah that will be really cool and of course you will be in the listener league for next year yes and a reminder follow us on instagram instagram.com slash fantasy footballers you can follow mike on twitter and instagram at ff hitman yeah follow jason at jason ffl yeah (laughs) you can follow me at andy holloway yeah and the communities join the foot.com. We've got a Wednesday show, which means we have some buy or sell. 
Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, it was a good week for Buy or Sell last week. We did an AFC East edition. We, we all went four out of five. It's really crazy because the, the one that each one of us got wrong was a different one, but we all went four out of five. So Yeah, Mike, you lost on the Devin Singletary 10 total touches. Yep. He ended up with more, obviously. I lost on the Devontae Parker 10 fantasy points. <laughs> oh, doubted Devontae Parker. Yeah, how dare I? <laughs> And then Jason lost on the John Brown over five catches. Seven targets. You should have done it, John. So well, seven targets. And what's funny, he was four for 76. I mean, that's, yeah, had a, great game. that's a good game. Yeah, you're, I, you I lost. feel like I won. You lost. I won. <laughs> All right. NFC North edition for week 10. Buy or sell. Devontae Adams. Uh, a top 10 wide receiver performance this week against Carolina. Last week, he was 7 for 41 on 11 targets, played 45 snaps. That was 83%. Panthers 24th against the wide receiver position. Do you expect Devontae Adams to re-enter the top 10 this week? Buy or sell? I am buying the, the, the Carolina Panthers. It's a fine matchup for fantasy wide receivers. It was his first game back, which unfortunately he didn't come through. However, 11 targets. 11 targets from Aaron Rodgers and the way that Aaron Rodgers had been playing until last week. I will buy that Devonta Adams is back. Yeah, I, I'm buying it completely. I mean, you come in uh, your first week back, you get double-digit targets, a, a winnable matchup. I, I buy him top 10 for sure. This one's really tough for me. I don't have a sell, uh, heavy – like I'm 51-49 on it, so I will sell. I'll sell Devonta Adams uh, last week. Disappointing. Offense seemed out of sync. Top 10 is a high bar for a wide receiver, so I'll go ahead and sell it and, you know, be the contrarian here. All right. All right, number uh, number two here, Stephon Diggs. Is he a top 12 wide receiver against Dallas? Thielen didn't play. He was the number one wide receiver in week six, the number six wide receiver in week seven. Then he was the 15th wide receiver against Washington, and then last week disappeared. Oh, if these trends continue. He will actually go nope. Marty McFly photograph he and will. disappear. I'm, he'll be a wide receiver 160. I'm going to sell top 12 against Dallas. I, I don't have enough confidence. Top 12, a high bar. Hasn't done it the last two weeks, so I don't think he's going to do it this week against Dallas. Kirk Cousins has been playing fantastic football on the season, but I am going to sell here, even with that Adam Thielen expected to miss this upcoming game. The Dallas defense has been very good over the course of the season. If you take the wide receiver position as a whole and say how many times have they given up a top 12 total points to the fantasy position, uh, it's only been once yeah. on the season. So but who was it against, Jason? Bizarrely, it was against the New York Jets. <laughs> they got it done. Uh, but Wentz didn't get it done. Daniel Jones didn't get it done. I mean, they haven't faced a, a ton of stiff competition, so I'm going to sell. Yeah, man. Diggs is an enigma. It the mystery continues throughout this season. Top twelve is just so high, so I will sell as well. All right, we all sold that one. What about Matthew Stafford, who's on a roll, averaging three hundred and twelve passing yards per game, having a career year? Goes to Chicago this week, three hundred passing yards for Matthew Stafford. What do you think? Buy or sell? Uh, it's an easy sell to me. I mean, that's a high bar against the Chicago Bears defense. I'm out. I'm Shark Tank. selling as well. I love Matthew Stafford, but they've given up a 300-yard game one time out of eight games this year, so I'm selling. Who was it? Who was it? it was oh, it him? You just had the stat. I've, I was wondering if you had it. Cause yeah, I, I could pull it up for you. I'm buying. Oh. I'll buy Stafford with 300 yards. He's just. It was actually Case Keenum. There you go. He. I, I get that. The odds are certainly against him. Flacco actually got close. But the, and uh, the it way, was Bridgewater, too, that got close. The way that they are playing and, and, and calling plays for Matthew Stafford, which is 500 every other play, <laughs> so I'll, I'll buy it. Well, I, I, in, in your defense, um, since Carrion Johnson went down and their running game is pretty much non-existent, it, he is not just – he's averaging 312 passing yards – on the season, but over the last three games, I mean, he is he's on fire. Here's his li lines over the last three games. 364 yards, 352 yards, and 406 yards. It's been the right what? recipe for him. He's got uh, above average weapons, a below average defense, and no running game. What's funny is like, dude, what's, what's old is new again. It's, 
this is who Stafford used to be. Like when Stafford first came in the league, he was an absolute gunslinger with Calvin Johnson just chucking a deep all the time. Then he was turned into a game manager, which to his credit, he was succeeding at. He was a good quarterback, a good game manager. Now they're letting him open it up. Again. I'm a big Matthew Stafford fan in general. As, as I too. You know, he's one of the more resilient, uh, durable quarterbacks anymore. You know, that wasn't something when he came into no, the league. No, it was not. And now he is. All right. So we've got uh, Mike buying that one. You might, you might end up right. What would you do with the? I assume if Patrick Mahomes is coming back, you're not going to stay with Stafford against Chicago. Would you go right back to Mahomes? <sighs> I probably would. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely would. All right. How about this one? The other side of the ball in this game, David Montgomery, who's been given a great opportunity lately, 20 total touches, buy or sell against Detroit this week. In week nine, last week, he had 17 touches, in, but it feels like all of them happened in the second half. And then week eight, he had 31 touches, 20. so 20 is a nice line. Yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty high bar. I think this is a matchup that he will be involved in. They'll be able to run the ball. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that he has 20 total touches. I think so too. Right now, the Lions are 32nd in the NFL in points given up to the running back position. Carry counts over the last four weeks: 25, 33, 20, and 34. I don't think Cohen and and uh, Mike Davis are going to steal too many. I'll go with buy. And just to be contrarian, I will double down with my Matt Stafford having a, a solid game, taking the ball out of the hand of David Montgomery, at least for a high carry count. Yeah, so I will, I'll sell. Incredibly consistent analysis. Well, Mike. I don't Mike. want the fence to hit me in the crotch. Well, that's neither do I. Jamal Williams. Fence sitters, Jason. Mm. When yeah. you sit on the fence, where does it go? I got you. I, I wasn't there. Right I mean, in the I, grundle. That went right over my head. Hmm. <laughs> Better over your head than under, yeah, underneath, under, under, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Jamal, <laughs> <laughs> Jamal Williams, will he be a top 20 wide receiver? No, against no he's a running back. Sell. So, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my mistake. Let's go. We're all selling the wide receiver one. Yes. But a top 20 running back, which saying that out loud, you're like, well, that seems like a you know the difficult task for the quote-unquote RB2 in Green Bay. However, you look at the last four weeks, he's been a top 20 running back, all four of them. So are you buying that he makes it five straight? He has been there on the back of receiving touchdowns. He has one in each of the last four games. Jamal Williams has five receiving <laughs> touchdowns on the year. Just like we all projected. Like that's, that's an outstanding number at the end of the season for any running back. I'll, t I'll be honest. That will probably be the number at the end of the season <laughs> for Jamal. So I am going to sell this. I don't think he gets in the end zone this week. Um, I am selling out of spite. <laughs> like you just don't want it to happen. Is this I for Aaron? Am, I am no. I'm Aaron Jones. Nope. It's because Jamal Williams danced like an idiot in the uh. end zone when he was down 19 points at the end of the game, and so uh, spite sell. It's a strange way, way to put your fantasy analysis. Sometimes, Mike, we make choices with certain players. The heart wants what the heart wants. I don't like that guy's face. Sell. <laughs> Not quite that level. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, my, I like how we're, we're writing these down, and I think Al Borland put spite sell in for me instead of just well, sell. Well, we, we're historical men. We want to be accurate. All right, Mike, all right, what are you doing here? I'm going to sell. Okay. Just regular sell, though. Yeah, just, just a regular Not one. a spite sell. No. Okay. All right, that was Buy or Sell, brought to you by Pristine Auction. You can use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. It'll get you $5 towards a sports memorabilia purchase. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, Adam Gaze said Le'Veon Bell won't practice Wednesday. Won't practice. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, and they nice. will see where he progresses after that. This is a this, this is a, this, it's not a good thing. No, this is this it's, is it's what we call a bad thing. This is a DEFCON I don't know, three, whatever. Which, which is what's worse. like what's like is, is one or five is, is it out think, of five or I think ten or one is worse. Is this I think one go, is go worse. Go red alert. I know red alert's bad. All right. I'm I'm going DEFCON levels. See, I don't know if it's red. But here's my point. <laughs> yes, one is the most severe. All right. So I think a three is appropriate. Here's where 
we're at with Le'Veon Bell. They signed Josh Adams from the practice squad. They said, no, Le'Veon Bell's good. But they did it. Their, their transaction was that. He got an MRI for the second time this year. Okay, and now he's it was not just routine though. Sure, you know, totally like, routine. I got probably, one last week. He probably didn't even need it, right? No, he just like this is for fun. <laughs> um, and then he's not practicing. Those three things combined here say that you have to be prepared to not have Love Bell. And I, my expectation right now is I would operate on waivers, for instance, which probably already ran with all three of these pieces of news that Love's not playing this week. That's not to say he won't, I'm not, but that's how I would operate. Yeah, the, the difficult part here is that you don't have a clear and exciting alternative. Now, Bilal Pal would be the one I'd go with. Bilal Pal! But I'm not excited about it. <laughs> Bilal Pal's best days are behind him, and the running games... They were the, good the, days, though. The running game in New York... Look, look what Lev Bell was doing. It was not... Exciting. I feel like Blau Powell is this era's Fred Jackson. Like, just that kind okay. of vet who's behind the scenes, waiting in the wings, whenever he's gotten the opportunity, has been very good for fantasy. Uh, yeah. So, you know, maybe fresh legs. <sighs> Not fresh legs. Fresh old legs. The same Old as, fresh legs. Well, that's what Fred Jackson had. He had old fresh legs. Uh, yeah, I guess, look, I. it's Balaj Powell... Yay, we've got <laughs> starters. Maybe. So that's where we're at with that. Adam Thielen expected to miss week 10 against the Cowboys. Evan Ingram dealing with a sore foot following the loss to the Cowboys. Missed the final drive, not practicing Wednesday. Monitor that. Rhett yeah. Ellison could be a streaming tight he's, end option. It, he's fine. If you, if you want to just wait till the end of the week and break the glass, for Red for, Ellison? For emergency, then Red if, Ellison. If you're the Evan Ingram owner, yeah. you're saying? Yeah. yeah. And then we've got uh, Cam Newton. Oh. Injured reserve. Well, there's uh, nothing wrong with his foot. Th I mean, yeah. Uh, are you Ron Rivera? <laughs> oh, you got me. Yeah, I thought that's who that was. Don't yeah. even ask about the foot. It's really. It's so fine. It's double fine. <laughs> Really, really sad for me. I, th you know, it's I sad for a lot of people. Jason. It's sad for you know who I it's love sad how this for? Cam Newton. Yeah, I was sure. say, it's really, really sad for me. <laughs> That's like the, you're on the bottom of the list. <laughs> Look, Panthers, I, Panthers fans, Ron Rivera, Cam Newton. I think it's worse for me than Panthers okay. fans. Tell me why? Because you made him because a my I've guy. I got him in so many best ball leagues, and so it's like I, you know, I, I got. Yes, I, I thought I had him in a lot of best ball leagues. <laughs> you put your foot in your mouth. And that, that just oh, a ruins. broken foot. Oh, 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 too soon, gentlemen. <laughs> All right, Doug Marone announced Nick Foles will return as the starter after the week 10 bye. I'm, you know, for fantasy purposes, Nick Foles is capable. They do have weapons that have emerged, especially DJ Chark, who is, you know, outside of last week, been very consistent. Oof. Dude, if Nick Foles and my sweetie came out, yeah, Didi, my sweetie, he yeah, might, take a glance. If, he might be on your waiver wire. If Nick Foles came out as the starter this week with the Gardner Minshew mustache, <laughs> I mean, that'd be so awesome. That would be incredible. You mean next week because they're on bye yes. this week? But well, that gives him time to make oh, sure grow it's, the stash, it's yeah. prepared. He that just would, tries to get the goodwill from being the cool guy. He's got a headband. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, but your your point that is that would right. be like me showing up with the mustache <laughs> and the jorts, like. You wouldn't buy it. Now, does this hurt DJ Chark at all? Because, obviously, I, I think Foles is a better quarterback, so you should say, well, no, but there has kind of been that that first read, that mind meld that's been going on with Minshew and DJ Chark. Do you worry at all about, like, just change isn't good when the player you've had has been good? 100% of Nick Foles' touchdown passes in Jacksonville have been, <laughs> I to, love that stat. Have been to DJ Chark. <laughs> I'm not that concerned because I think DJ Chark's an elite player. That's why. Yeah, it, DJ Chark has broken out, and we, we're going to talk about it, but Nick Foles' playoff schedule, he could be another fantasy, fantasy hero yet again. Certainly, if you're in a, a super flex league, if Nick Foles had been dropped because he was you know, just someone you can't necessarily hold, he's an awesome pickup. Deshaun Jackson had core muscle surgery, put on injured reserve, the earliest he could return is the divisional round. For dynasty purposes, Deshaun Jackson's not dead. Deshaun Jackson's under contract for next season, and that speed will be there again next year. So you can be 
maybe hopeful, optimistic about what we thought we'd see this year coming back next year, but it ain't happening now. James Conner running back for the Steelers. Mike Tomlin said he's limited again in practice to begin the week, but he is optimistic that Conner will be available for Sunday's game. So this is something Jalen Samuels owners need to be aware of. And then if you're a James Conner owner, I mean, if he plays, you're kind of holding your breath for re-injury. Yeah, I, but if he plays, I play him. Yeah, if he plays, I play him. If he plays, I also play Jalen Samuel. I'm not going to bench Samuel in this situation. I think he's going to have enough volume. The real issue here is if you were the one that went out and picked up Trey Edmonds. Why are he'll you become singularizing him? Dead. Did I say Jalen Samuel? Yeah, multiple times. That's his name now. Okay. <laughs> this is really bad for me. <laughs> All right, Sean McVay says that things are looking positive for Malcolm Brown returning. You got to read the whole thing, though, because uh, his quote at the end. It's great. Is, yes. He says, as for the rotation between Gurley, Malcolm Brown, and Daryl Henderson, quote, I could probably be better equipped to answer after the game Sunday <laughs> when you see what our game plan is. That's awesome. So, see, no, that's, that's how you Will it rain it. today? I will be better equipped – after today to tell you whether it rained but this is this is at least funny and good spirited trolling and not the yeah, i'm not telling you my game plan bro, bro, yeah, if, bro. if you're going to keep it close to your vest yes don't act like you don't know don't yes. don't be like yes. i have no idea what my game plan is you won't know what to plan for other team yeah all right and then a, a an update on the left bell situation adam gay says that it is a knee ankle injury the MRI showed no structural issues, but he's pretty sore. So that's why he won't practice. He's pretty sore. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mike. Adam Gaze once again bringing us the news. A reminder, <laughs> drop it like it's hot. Drop oh. it like it's hot. This week may be the most important one of all. Look at your waiver wire, see how you did, and then see who was dropped because there is going to be an assortment of goodies potentially in your league that you can pick up tomorrow. And I think there's going to be a number of players from these six bye week teams that end up hitting. Mohamed Sanu could be one of them. Some of the defensive options. So pay attention to that. And a reminder, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of impactful fantasy news. Download the app today. Before we get into the playoff primer, I want to thank today's sponsor, Sonos. This holiday season, immerse yourself in all your favorite holiday classics with a new home theater system from Sonos, ladies and gentlemen, I know not everyone gets in the, the spirit as soon as the right household and right family, but our Sonos system, it's already playing the carols. Oh, I've oh, had is it the really? Christmas on you're our darn, Sonos. You're darn right. So, November 1st, it started. Yeah, look, up up in the loft, the, the, the carols are already going and they sound fantastic on my Sonos system. You can play these carols when the TV is off. Are you hosting family and friends? Sonos works with all your streaming services and control is simple with the app. Uh, they are correct. The app is incredibly easy to use. Apple AirPlay 2, you can use your voice because you, you can use Amazon Alexa. The Google Assistant, like I said, I have it up in my loft for the TV, for the kids' TV. The, the sound quality up there is fantastic. I I recommend Sonos to And you're a sound everyone. snob. I am. I am a bit of a sound snob. You well, are, what's that you called? Are, an audio file? Yes. That's, that's the no, nice no, word. No, it's, it's, it's sound snob. Yeah. Sound? It's a, sound snob. It's a sound, sound snob. snob. <laughs> If you want to be a sound snob or an audiophile like me, which you probably should, check out Sonos.com to learn more. Complete your holiday shopping. It makes a perfect gift. And uh, all the men out there want to remind everybody about Roman. Look, losing your hair, it can really, really suck. And when it happens, it's like it's red alert. It's DEFCON 1. You go, what's going on? But look, you're no, no less of a man if you're losing your hair because... I want to. I'm not. I'm no less of a man. I'm losing my hair. If you want to stop losing your hair, then Roman can actually help, and in certain situations, even regrow the hair. They make it easy to treat hair loss without ever leaving your house, without any kind of uncomfortability, without any kind of embarrassment. You can do it right from your phone or your mobile device, and they offer FDA approved over the counter and prescription options. So the doctor decides if medication is right for you, and if it is, you'll get discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. Go to getroman.com slash footballers to start your free online visit. If you want to stop or prevent hair loss, starting early is key. Visit getroman.com slash footballers. That's getroman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. Getroman.com 
slash footballers. All right, we are going to get into the playoff primer. Mike made a bit of a faux pas and uh, ended bad. up not creating. After we talked about his Mona Lisa, I, did he paint after Mona Lisa? Did Da Vinci it do over? anything? No, I mean, he called it, it a day. So if Mike didn't make a drop for playoff primer is what I'm saying. Playoff primer. Oh, that was nice. That was that, yeah. Was that oh. a was that an acoustic? That was just my voice. No, oh, I thought that was a guitar. All right, <laughs> <laughs> we do this every year around this time of year, and it is uh, we're we're taking a look at playoff matchups, and we're taking a look at some players that have ideal playoff matchups based on defensive statistics that we have at this point through week nine, and you know last year there were a number of players that we highlighted on the show that you saw the benefits of what they had lined up for the playoff weeks, weeks 14 through 16. Last week, Dalvin Cook jumped. Last year. Yeah, sorry, last year. Dalvin Cook jumped from being the RB30 through weeks 1 through 13. In points per game. In points per game to the RB5 for the playoff weeks. You saw the same thing with Amari Cooper. Had a nice playoff schedule. Jumped from the wide receiver 30 to the wide receiver 4 for the playoff weeks. And so there are opportunities to take advantage of playoff schedules, but what's the kind of general uh, strategy that you guys take when looking at matchups versus, you know, you start your studs is a philosophy, right? You just start your studs, and then there's opportunities with the schedule. So how do you guys look at that? So there, there's a couple different ways. Uh, highlighting bad matchups are, is just as important as highlighting good matchups, and it's going to be different for everybody based on what your fantasy record is right now if I'm one of those teams that's sitting there nine it's seven and two I know I'm in and now I'm I'm really preparing my team like in league one we know pretty much uh you know our our, our uh celeb and expert league on uh NFL we're, we're we're pretty much in the playoffs it would be a a hard bad beat the rest of the way to not get in so we're looking at those and saying are do we have guys that are really we're afraid of in that in those playoff schedules where maybe we can pivot to a similar guy, uh, you know, similar tier, and uh, maybe upgrade elsewhere because we're we're planning ahead. So, if you are needing to win now, then you don't really have the luxury. You got to get in the playoffs first, but you also don't want to overdo it. You know what I mean? Last year, uh, Drew Brees had an unbelievable matchup. Two yeah. games against Tampa Bay looked like. You got to go trade for him. He's just going to be amazing. And then, you know, that that hurt people and they lost. So you got to take everything with a grain of salt. This is just one piece of information to help you know who we think has a really good playoff outlook and a really bad playoff outlook. Yeah. And I think, you know, we'll start at the quarterback position, but you have, you know, at the quarterback position, some leagues, obviously, highly competitive on picking up both streaming quarterback options or multiple quarterbacks on their. Uh, on people's benches. So it seems like an area where this matters more maybe than some of the other positions. Jameis Winston has the best playoff schedule from weeks 14 through 16. He's got Indianapolis, Detroit, and Houston. Uh, those are both in the bottom half against the quarterback. Some other guys, Daniel Jones, Baker Mayfield, Ryan Tannehill, Carson Wentz, Nick Foles. So you brought up Nick Foles. His final two weeks, weeks 15 and 16, maybe you've got to buy in week 14 when he plays the Chargers, but he does play Oakland Atlanta to end the year, and that's what Mike was speaking to earlier. Yeah, it's it's a juicy matchup, and I mean you can combo that. It, it doesn't always work out. Often it does when you're talking quarterback, but wide receiver-wise, DJ Chark and Didi, the the matchups are incredibly juicy for them as well with the with, with Oakland and Atlanta to close it out. Yeah, and and of course that's going to depend, you know, for for the league one. We only have playoffs in week fifteen and sixteen, so it's fantastic. That first week in the playoffs isn't great, and sometimes you look for someone to pair with a player like that. You say, if I can have these two guys, look at two guys' schedules, especially if you're in the streaming situation. If you're talking about you currently are streaming quarterbacks or you currently are streaming defenses, hold two of them where when you put them together, they complete that perfect puzzle piece for those weeks. Um, you know, I, I agree with you bringing up Jameis. He's the most interesting guy to me because of all the players who have that boom bust. They can have monster games. They benefit from those high scoring, easier matchups. He's got the top two wide receivers in fantasy right now. It's, I, I still can't wrap my head around that. I can't wrap. Thank you, Bruce Arian, for had, doing what you do. 
a bye week. Not every team has had their bye week. And the number one and number two wide receivers are Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And and still Jameis Winston is left for dead in our minds. Yeah, so for part of your planning, you want to look at your, your trade deadlines. You want to look at your playoff structure. Let's fill in the other side of this equation, though. Look, you're making decisions. You know, you bring up Jameis Winston, maybe Nick Foles' the situation. But you do have some stars that have maybe tougher schedules. You know, Patrick Mahomes is the one that jumps out more than anybody else because he, oh. has, he has a really difficult playoff schedule on paper, but he's Patrick Mahomes, right? He's got New England in New England, then he's got Denver, and then he's got Chicago in Chicago. Those teams are the first, third, and seventh against fantasy quarterbacks. Now, I'm going down yeah. with Patrick Mahomes. Are you guys in agreement with yes. that? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I am, but I do think, you know, you, you limit some of the upside – that being said, remember the you know the 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 playoff game, one of the best games I've ever witnessed in my life between Kansas City and New England, where it was just who can get to a hundred points the quickest. Yeah. Um, I agree completely. Patrick Mahomes, this is a tale of not drafting that super early quarterback. Obviously, people haven't been happy. Gets injured, comes back, and now has a, a bad playoff schedule. But you're gonna roll with him. Um, Jared Goff, Derek Carr, Matthew Stafford also have rough playoff schedules. Stafford does have Tampa Bay there in week 15. Yeah, he's he's the the delicious sandwich where the meat is great but the bread is bad. It's rye bread. So, right, it's a it, it, my favorite we we kind of glossed over my favorite playoff guy, a guy that, you know, I had the really tough decision today of do I drop this player cuz I'm in bipocalypse and I am holding on to Carson Wentz because he's got I've got Carson Wentz and Phillip Rivers, so you know Carson comes back, plays New England. But after that, Carson Wentz's schedule is perfecto the rest of the season, and he's got to me the best combination of being a good quarterback with a good schedule. His playoff weeks of the New York Giants, the Washington Redskins, and the Dallas Cowboys is is pretty good. And as you head into the playoffs, just streaming considerations, the worst five teams right now in terms of, uh, I guess they'd be the best five teams to stream against. And this is something you can see in our Stream Finder tool as well. The Cardinals, Raiders, Falcons, Buccaneers, and Bengals. Those are great teams to stream your quarterbacks against. Yep. And looking at the running back position, uh, it's it's a little harder to take anything away from who has the great schedules because the, the, the best schedules are for David Montgomery, the Denver running backs, Minnesota with Dalvin Cook, the Patriots, Green Bay, and Seattle. So David Montgomery, we have talked about perhaps he was a, a trade for target because the, the, the schedule opened up so much for him. Lindsey and Freeman, we don't have enough data yet on uh, on what their new quarterback is going to do. He did not throw them the ball, and that's a huge problem. That creates a huge problem for those these guys in a timeshare if they aren't being able to pad the stats with some receptions. Dalvin Cook is – You got him. Yeah, you're you not got him. I'm you're, saying – You're not getting him. Madison. Put Madison on your bench. Like, we've – I've I've talked about it. We've talked about it. If Dalvin Cook goes down, which he has – it's happened to him basically every year of his life. He has had some kind of injury where he's missing time. Alexander Madison is a league-winning running back to me. People are not ignoring you. Has his percentage gone up? It was in the well, 30s. He, but but our listeners aren't ignoring you, Okay, Mike, good. Because the only... I will not be ignored. The only player I omitted from the top 10 players on the undefeated teams list that I didn't mention was Alexander Madison. Okay. He's on... Because Cook's on those teams, Madison's on those teams. Good. Because they're listening to you. Cook, you're playing. Cook, you're set up for. I think these schedules are very interesting for players that have been more hit and miss. Sony Michelle, it's either great... Or you want to claw your eyes out. Aaron Jones has had some good games, some bad games, along with Jamal Williams. So, Sony Michelle, Aaron Jones being on the list of, uh, you know, and James White, Jamal Williams, they have two um, incredible schedules to end the year. And then Chris Carson is also lined up for success, ending the year against the Rams, Panthers, and Arizona. This is good information to have at your trade deadline. Yep. Yeah, as, as trade deadlines come up, <clears throat> you might have a player here that you go, oh, man, I, I really worry about um, Damian Williams' playoff schedule. You know, we talked about it being bad for Pat Mahomes, really tough defenses, Chicago, New York, 
or New England, uh, Denver, maybe wait for one of those big games like we just saw and say, oh, it's his job. Maybe you can convert him into a, a Chris Carson who's got a better playoff schedule um, up ahead. I, I think that's one way that you can utilize this kind of information. I would say this. There are a handful of guys with really bad playoff schedules at the running back position. Marlon Mack, Damian Williams, Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson, and then the running back assortment, allotment, uh, menagerie in Detroit. Ooh. But the one that I'd be most worried about is, okay, Carlos Hyde has kind of helped you out. But if he's got a tough schedule, he's not the kind of player that overcomes right. obstacles in general for your fantasy team. So he's going Denver, Tennessee, Tampa. Not a great lineup there. And then Damian Williams, if you're w – would you call it re-believing? Uh, would you yeah, call it – I think that works it's because fair. even the believers – Mike, you're a believer. Yes. You came into this year believing. You are now – Rebelieving because you lost. Yeah, it. you lost. It. I I have admit I when it looked like McCoy had taken the job, it was okay. Take this information and move on. It wasn't drop Damian because you knew this was a possibility. But I do believe that Damian Williams has taken the starting job back for now. For now, New England, Denver though in the first two playoff weeks that could be tough sledding for him. Although he does more damage in the passing game, so. Take it right. for what you will. See what happens over the next few weeks. I'll, Anybody else at running back you want to talk about? Yeah, I would. I would highlight. Um, I would highlight Leonard Fournette. I think he's got a great stretch run here. And yep. if you're looking at, you know, I I recently had to do a trade where I uh, it, it was there was more to it. I got picks back, but I swapped from Leonard Fournette to Marlon Mack because I needed a pick next year, and I had the bipocalypse in Week Twelve where Leonard Fournette's on by. But if you can do that in reverse, if you're one of those playoff-bound teams, I would much rather have Leonard Fournette's playoff schedule than Marlon Mack. And they're, they're in that tier where you can work a deal around those two players, uh, I think, pretty right. easily. Five best teams to play running backs against right now, the Lions, Bengals, Chiefs, Dolphins, Panthers. And it's tough sledding right now against New England, the Saints, the Buccaneers. Yep. And the San Francisco 49ers. All right, looking at the wide receiver position, what are some uh, oh, takeaways that you guys have? What One other name, sorry, I just want to bring up. I know he's injured right now, but James Conner, I, lo I love his playoff schedule. Arizona, Buffalo, who has not been good against the run, and the Jets, those are three teams. Yeah, solid. I mean, that you know, and right now, while he's been injured, he's a guy you can acquire, unlike a Dalvin Cook. Are you willing to do that? I am on willing. the basis, I mean, he's been, he's been, he's had the Matt, Matt Breida problems where he's, but he's had the Matt Breida that he's putting up fantasy points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, but I, it, it could hurt you in the playoffs too. I guess I'm will, I, I'm more curious what you're willing to pay for him. Yeah. He, I mean, if, you know, I keep going back to the Marlon Mack well, a player that's been really solid. People want Marlon Mack. He's been great, but his stretch run isn't quite as juicy as these other players. I think I'd be willing to go that level. And I think you could get that, that deal done. Okay, yeah. Marlon Mack's the only player really at the, only start at the running back position that has back-to-back -back, um, bottom or, or difficult matchups to start the playoffs. Jay, would you trade David Johnson for James Conner? Yes, I would. Okay. All right, let's go to the wide receiver position. Uh, some interesting stretch run players at wide out. We talked about Nick Foles, so DJ Chark and D.D. Westbrook. And once again, look on your waiver wire. I found him sitting there on on my waiver wire in my money league because D.D. Westbrook I'm referring to. That. Yeah, and he's still hurt. I mean, he missed last week. He, he left the game early two weeks ago. He missed all of last week, so you do need him to – he needs to come back. Yes, but if you're prepping for the playoffs and you're already in a good position, like if D.D. Westbrook comes out in two weeks and he's got – 10 targets again because it's Nick Foles, that, that won't be surprising. T.Y. Hilton has an incredible stretch run if he's back on the field, but the fact he's not right now might make him very available at trade deadlines. He's sure. got Tampa, New Orleans, and Carolina all 24th or worse against the wide receiver. Terry McLaurin has Green Bay in week 14, but then ends up with Philly, New York. Oh, it's so good, but that he's a tough one 
in the sense that you have to know in the interim when, <laughs> when you're projecting the end of the season for Terry McLaurin, it's kind of like we're talking about James Conner. Be aware, maybe he's maybe he's banged up and he's not playing for those weeks. But it's very possible, if not likely, that Haskins is finishing the year for the Redskins. Right. And if that's the case, I don't care about Terry McLaurin's schedule. What do you make of uh, A.J. Brown and Corey Davis? Ryan Tannehill has been much improved over what the team was getting from Marcus Mariota. And I, I, I'll actually I'll direct it more towards A.J. Brown, who since Tannehill has taken over as a starter, his snaps, A.J. Brown's snaps, are still a little bit frustrating with Tajay Sharp, but A.J. Brown has been delivering for fantasy, and he gets Oakland, Houston, and the Saints. I think it's very important that when we as fantasy players talk about the wide receiver core in Tennessee, we don't speak A.J. Brown and Corey Davis's name at the same time. <laughs> I think it's okay. important. I really okay. do because okay. I'm looking at these and I'm going, no, I, if I'm going to lose in the playoffs, I'm not losing with a, a Tennessee Titan wide receiver. But what I'm really saying to myself is I'm certainly not losing with Corey Davis in my starting lineup. Okay. A.J. Brown has more upside and more opportunity. I would want to see the uh, NBA jam rule start to apply towards the playoffs. If you pick him up, Let's take a look. Let's see if Tannehill continues to throw for, you know, what he's – continue to do what he's doing. I would look at A.J. Brown. I'm not losing with Corey Davis on my playoff roster. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I, I do think A.J. Brown, as a rookie, is a guy that obviously has not met his potential yet. Uh, he's still growing as a player and maybe as a man. He's humongous. <laughs> he is so – I don't remember him being so big at Ole Miss, and I watched this, and he's a tank out it's, there. It's uh, – his his clothes shrink in the, the laundry. Yeah, apparently. That's what it is. Devontae Parker. Now, what would be better than, mm. than winning in the playoffs <laughs> and then your opponent has to see Devontae Parker in the lineup? He's got arguably the best playoff schedule, the Jets, the Giants, the Bengals. That's uh, incredible. That is so incredible that you start to say, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to have a nice run during that time. But it, it it's still the Miami offense and the, the it, mistakes. It still is, and we we need to see what can Parker do without Preston Williams helping. Maybe. I don't think Preston Williams was opening things up for Devontae Parker. I don't think anyone was double covering Preston I'm not Williams. Not talking about double covering, but it's things defenses change when you know that to that the sec the best second option is now closed. It totally. Did uh, uh, agree with the the premise but my point is going from Preston Williams you know to the to the second and third options whoever that is I don't know if Albert Wilson gets involved it doesn't seem likely um it'll be him Grant miscellany uh yeah so you know but I I actually and I this is something I don't want to say but it is what I believe I love Devontae Parker like I I love him going forward I think that he's going to be a very very relevant player at, at wide receiver, you don't get consistency. I mean, the number one wide receiver in fantasy, Mike Evans, has a goose and a 3.8 fantasy finish because they don't get the guaranteed touches. Um, and so with Devontae Parker, I, I love his upside with Fitzpatrick. And until he's replaced, replaced which might not happen, I am all about – if if he's still on waivers, which he is in about half a leagues, can't be. And I would do one of these package trades where maybe you're maybe you're getting rid of a player with a bad schedule to get a better running back and then throw in Devontae Parker. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. You, you still have the variable of at any moment in time, Josh Rosen could be throwing the football. Yep. But until then, not bad. His last five games, he's been a top 25, 24 receiver in four of those five games. His, other, his only one where he wasn't, he was the wide receiver 35. Parker's been good. And they're getting blitzed. I mean, their defense is bad. And so if Ryan Fitzpatrick is slinging it and you have an entire game to throw the ball, that's, yeah, the, Brooks is highlighting your quote that he will forever keep in our archives. Uh, Jason Moore. Good. Bring no, it up. November 6, 9.37 a.m. I love Devontae Parker. That's right. And bring it up when he's fantastic and winning championships. Hashtag Foot Clan titles. So we're we'll never bringing it up again. Got it. <laughs> mm. All right. <laughs> Worst wide receiver schedules. These are more interesting to me. Uh, the Chiefs have you know we talked about Mahomes well that the capped upside you're not going to lose with Tyreek Hill on your bench but no. you might win with Sammy Watkins on your bench you've got the Patriots you've got the Broncos and you've got the Bears that's one three four against wide receivers you know my Sammy Watkins policy 
I don't have to make this decision in any league. Right. But the peripheral pieces in Kansas City, you might want to be concerned about the upside there. Yeah, and I, I wanted to bring up with Tyreek Hill, you, you mentioned that incredible playoff game against the Patriots. It was 37-31 to 31 for the people at home. Do you remember Tyreek Hill's stat line in that game? What, do you have one catch or something? One reception. It's the New England disappearing act, your take best option. Yep, you take away your number one option, and they can do it. The, that defense can actually get the job done. Yeah, if you buy that narrative completely, then you might say that Watkins is a better option than you think. Julian Edelman, Mohamed Sanu, the New England wideouts. Uh, pull up Sammy's numbers in that game. Uh, he had a huge game. Yeah, he did. Yeah, four for one fourteen. Yeah, yeah, he's real good at. Tri- he's, tri- he's he's a trickster. <laughs> he's a trickster. He's real good at being good in the games that nobody's starting him. So you know the Patriots come along and it's like, oh, yeah, you can't play Watkins. Or the games that catch your eye, right? Big playoff game, first game of the year. Edelman, Sanu, tough schedule. Cup, Woods, Cooks. I think that one's interesting. You're not going to bench Cooper Cup, but you might Woods. be less excited about Woods and Cooks if they have a tough schedule. Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson is risky business with a very difficult playoff schedule and a guy named Mitch Trubisky mm-hmm. throwing uh, him in the football. He shouldn't be the quarterback by then. You're talking about Allen Robinson? No. <laughs> <laughs> Allen Robinson should be the quarterback yeah. by then. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we can just hope for Chase Daniels. Best teams to start wide receivers against right now, Tampa, Oakland, the Giants, the Falcons, the Texans. Worst teams, Patriots, Bills, Broncos, Bears, Cowboys. All right, let's look at the tight end position before we get into our Thursday night preview here. Well, and we'll look at the defenses as well. Okay. Well, tight ends, a couple that jump out. If O.J. Howard can find his way back into the offense, he has a nice schedule. I, I'm not I don't it. care very much. <laughs> I know I know O.J. Howard's someone I'm rolling with this week against Arizona, but you, you can't – I mean, maybe if you've got a deep bench and you want to stash him and hope. But. So both are on waivers right now. The other, the other tight end with the great schedule is Greg Olson, Atlanta – at Atlanta, Seattle, at the Colts. Those are three plus matchups. Would you rather stash Greg Olson right now or OJ Howard? I would much rather have Greg Olson, a okay. guy who's been involved, done it for longer. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and then on the bad tight end schedules, it's interesting because I brought up Mark Andrews and that I think Mark Andrews is likely to be a player that could lose you your league if you're too loyal to the way he started the season. He has the worst schedule in the playoffs against uh, defenses that are pretty good against the tight end. Buffalo, in Buffalo, you take the yardage numbers from Lamar Jackson and you put it up against that secondary in Buffalo, you're asking for Mark Andrews to score. The Jets, who are actually very good against the tight end position, probably a lot of that has to do with Adams, uh, and then Cleveland to end the year. I just think you need to not be blindly loyal to Mark Andrews. If there's a trade that fits your team, I'm not opposed to making it. Austin Hooper has a tough playoff schedule. I'd still I'm not as him. worried about Austin Hooper. See, I am worried about Austin Hooper. Last year, Austin Hooper, we brought him up on this show, and we talked about he had a bad playoff schedule. In points per game, weeks 1 through 13, he was actually the tight end 8 last year, but at the, the, the bad schedule he had, weeks 14 through 16, he was the tight end 33. So, I mean, I, that's Different not to say. Different player this year. 100%. Different, he's, he's no, involved, in the, new. involved in the offense more, and I'm, I'm not saying, oh, I think he's going to stink. But what I am saying is you can definitely capitalize on a on a Hooper, especially think about like Darren Waller, down game. Maybe people, you could trade an Austin Hooper for Darren Waller plus, plus uh, you know, another relevant player. I would be, I would be willing to do that. Or because just I'm, straight up, potentially. I mean... Sure. Darren Waller as Tennessee Jacksonville. Uh, Maybe the I can get Waller and my guy Devontae Parker. Ooh, hmm? you think my guy. You think that's how people are viewing Hooper? That yeah, people. I mean, Hooper's been number one. Yeah, he's the number one tight end. People at this point are viewing Hooper as they should, which is he's he's great. And I'm not saying super. He's, going he's to super. S- oh, super Hooper. Uh, oh yeah, rhyming. Or is it just <laughs> super? Hmm? So Hooper. Super. Her. I put it all. Oh, in the H is silent. 
I'm still pronouncing it. Super. <laughs> it's so silent you can hear it. Yes. Uh, best teams to start tight ends against, which, you know, this matters a lot. You're streaming them. Cardinals, Buccaneers, Raiders, Colts, Bears. I'm going to throw Jason Witten out there. Jason Witten has a nice playoff schedule. Maybe it's a one-off against the Giants. But tried and true, you're probably not getting goose with Jason Witten. Toughest teams to stream tight ends against 49ers, Bills, Patriots, Bengals, Jets. And then some team defense highlights, maybe maybe one of you know the the most important part of this show that I almost skipped was the team defense schedules Baltimore, Buffalo. Hopefully you got Baltimore on the waivers today. Yes. Because you're gonna be able to hold on to them for the playoffs. But they play Buffalo, the Jets, and Cleveland. Yes, please. Uh, the Dolphins have a great schedule. No, thank you. I'm not playing stinks, the Dolphins. man. If they could just have some semblance of a defense. They probably have the best schedule, but I could care less. Yeah. But the Eagles, the Eagles defense, they play the Giants and a mistake-prone Daniel Jones. They play the Redskins and a mistake-prone either Keenum or Haskins. Those two weeks are great. You might not want them in week 16 against Dallas, but I'll take two out of three weeks right there. Well, it, it's the more important weeks. It, it really is. You might say, oh, the championship is the most important, but you don't, you don't get to play there you if buy you don't a win first. The, the first two. You know, I would much rather worry about the first two weeks of the, of the playoffs because then at, if you get to the championship, I don't know if you know this, you only got to beat one team. That's true. The math checks out. And the Pittsburgh Steelers also need to be noted. One, because they're just – an actual good defense. So good. And so it's not like the Dolphins where the schedule is incredible, but the defense is suspect. The Steelers are good, and they are at Arizona, Buffalo. At home. At, at home, at New York, the Jets. I mean, these are – the Arizona one is – it could be hit or miss, but I guess the, Buffalo and the Jets, that's fantastic. They'll be just fine against e Arizona. Yes. Put away your blind loyalty in the Chicago Bears defense. They have the worst defensive schedule to end the year – they play Dallas in Green Bay and then Kansas City. I know. I They've been dropped on a lot of waivers. I've seen the It's so the tempting Bears out not there, to grab them. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, the Bears. Let me go get them. And then I look at their schedule, and I'm like, I don't know. And the, I don't know if I want to yeah. play them over. Like, usually, there's another option on waivers. You know, the, the, last week, I could have grabbed the Bears. Or I could have grabbed the Saints, and I chose the Saints over the Bears. Yeah, and I've been kind of loyal to the Bills, and their defense hasn't really put up a big week in a while. They're 13th on the year, and they've got a rough schedule. Baltimore at Pittsburgh, at New England to yeah. end the year. Bail out. you got to move on from them. This is the time of year where I'm rostering two defenses quite frequently in leagues. I'm trying to save fab, save wa waiver priority, get a defense a week ahead, uh, Mike mentioned picking up the Ravens this week because you've got that great end of season schedule and they're they you know they showed up against New England enough yes they got Jimmy Smith back too and is changing their defense so you can't worry about the entire season so uh, Eagles Ravens Steelers looking good and be careful with the Bears the Titans defense has a tough matchup over those last three weeks yeah um, another defense to throw out there as a decent one if you're looking to pick someone up. The Green Bay Packers, who've been uh, better Solid. this year, they play Washington the first week of the playoffs, and then Chicago get Trubisky the next week. So, uh, you know, that can get done. Now, Judge Giamatti, you're, you're present still, right? You're here? Yes, sir. Can we get these full charts um, posted into articles on the website? Because that's – some people – it's nice to look at this. The end-of-season schedule makes them your own determinations. Everybody's got – waiver wires with different teams. So we'll get them published at the fantasy footballers.com. So you guys can see these, maybe put them out on social today as well. Jason is sighing. I'm just tilting. Sad. Sorry. Tilting. I, I had, well, this, this episode doesn't help because I, I did, I made my decision on who to drop in the league of record. Mm. I dropped Terry, Terry McLaurin is out there. Okay. And it sucks. I don't want, I, I, you I, were backed into such a corner. Like this is not a, like you want, you want Terry to know, that you I, still love him. Look, you want Terry to know you mean nothing personal. Terry, by the this. tenacious Z will welcome you back. Just pass waivers, have nobody pick you up for a week, and then nobody bid up high on you next week because I've got very little fab, and you are welcome back. Yeah, th there you go, there you go. I think it meant, meant a lot to to scary Terry. Thank you. Thursday night breakdown. 
I think this is going to be a fun game. The Chargers at four and five taking on the Raiders in Oakland. The Raiders are four and four. Divisional matchup, a 47 and a half point over under. The Chargers are one point favorites in this one after the big upset win that I totally called <laughs> on the show <laughs> against Green Bay last week. So Thursday night football, Derek Carr playing great football. Mm-hmm. He's on been, film looking great. The stats look great. Two passing touchdowns in five of six games. And he's he's just looked great. And this is not a matchup that I'm going to love him in. This is a team that's seen him a lot. This is a team that, uh, he, you know, they're, they're number six in fantasy points given up to the quarterback. They're top ten in, in against running back and or wide receiver and tight end. This is one of those funnel defenses where they say run the ball on us. But you're not throwing the ball. So I'm not in love here with the pass weapons that I have grown. You know, Hunter Renfro's kind of broken out. Tyrell Williams has been surprisingly very good on the year. And Derek Carr has, I agree with you, been playing great football. I'm not excited about any of them a, in this matchup. you got the matchup. Walrus. Sure, the Walrus is, is fine and safe because even if he has a lower-than-ceiling game, He's at tight end yep. where you don't have choices. And if he goes, you know, five for, let's just say, 55. 55. 55. <laughs> that was pretty delayed, and yeah. I'm very sorry. Um, you know, it, that's still a really good game at tight end, which is gross, but, like, you'd be like, oh, that's uh, it, we. It, this is a push-come-to-shove game for me. This sorry, would, Mike, did you want to expound I, on I just, something? I have an aside here. Okay. Because we have our soundboard. That we use for, for the drops and for the hilarious hijinks and entertainment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got all sorts of stuff in there. We really need, like, a 55 button. I've thought like about the, things like, like that. Like the easy button that you can just – you don't even have to think about it. You just smash yeah, that thing. Yeah, you know, that, and again, I've, I've thought about that. Let's just put it that way. Well, let's – hold on. <laughs> Let me take it a step further. I believe the technology exists. Oh, of course it does. To get one of these boards no. here? No. <laughs> one of those boards Look, there. I enjoy making a living. I enjoy having a job. There's just some things that I would not, you know, you don't give your car keys to a four-year-old. That's all, right. all I'm saying. All right. You give me a board or you give me a 55 button. Which one, well, you, which one you get? I don't. Al Borland. How about this? Make on, on show ultimatums are dangerous. <laughs> how about this? How about you, you give me I think a board or I'll button. just start doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I could I couldn't see what I was touching, but I could still reach it. That was pretty frightening, honestly. <laughs> the fifty five button I think we'd be okay with. Thank you. But I also think you might abuse it, so I'm a little scared. No, we know. Only when the it. number fifty five approaches. Mm-hmm. Which it will approach so much more often. I cannot control that. I was going to say this game's gonna come down <laughs> to look, I've talked about Derek Carr is not being sacked. What makes this Chargers defense special is the pass rush. And their ability to, to – I think that's where this matchup is going to be defined. Phillip Rivers, you know, Jason, I know you're you're streaming him this weekend by Apocalypse. I'll be honest with you. He's fine. I, I, he's real – he's a glass of 2%. Is any, oh, 2% is great. Well, sure. It's, in fact, the best milk. But at the end of the day, you're drinking a glass of milk. You're not – it's not chocolate milk. It ain't a milkshake. You're not drinking something. That, it, it'll. It's nutritionally fine. But you're not getting something special out of it, and that's not – Rivers hasn't given you a special game all yeah, year. Last, that's all I'm saying. Last week, start of the week, was Matthew Stafford against the Raiders because the matchup is great, and Stafford has the giant game opportunities. But Phillip Rivers, especially now with the change in offensive coordinator, they want to run the ball more. You saw that for one game. I don't expect a giant ceiling here, but he should have a very solid game. I mean, the Raiders are second to last in fantasy points given up to quarterback. It's a tough call, man. I, three games this year, Phillip Rivers has thrown zero touchdowns, including the win against Green Bay last week. Uh, so do I expect zero against this defense? No, I don't. I just don't know if Phillip Rivers – I think I'm saying goodbye to the upside of Phillip Rivers. What about the upside of Austin Eckler? who played on a season-low 34% of the snaps Ugh. last he's, week. He's a player I'm trying to pivot from as I prepare for the playoffs. You know, our, we have uh, our League One team has gotten a lot of out of Austin Eckler. I'm not excited to start him in the fantasy playoffs. I'm mm. worried about where this is trending. Right. And if you think it's trending that direction, 34% of snaps, you limit your upside, and maybe you need to move on. Here's what's crazy about the 34% of snaps. 
Okay, which is easily his lowest all season. His previous low was 45, but he's been in the 50s, the 70s. Let me read you his last yeah. five games carry counts. Ready? Three, five, five, three. And then last week on the season low, 35%. 12 carries. For 70 yards. I mean, so they, they're not going away. When he was on the field, they were utilizing him. I think the worry is... Does the passing work go down? You know, which is still, more valuable. Yeah, which is definitely more valuable, especially for Austin Eckler. He still had uh, four targets, four receptions last game. So I think it, he's a he's a monitor situation, but I'm not like jumping off a cliff yet. All right, I think that's fair. I think we need to see a little more from this offensive coordinator situation. And they were up nineteen nothing. That explains right. all the carries for Gordon and the carries for Eckler a little bit. Keenan Allen, this is it. <sighs> This no, is your calling your shot. This is your make or break. This is this is no. This is this is Keenan Allen had bounces back. This is when he finally has a good game. I have tweeted a number of stats over the last day and a half. One of them being targets in the NFL since Week Five. Keenan Allen's had a rough time, fantasy wise, but he is still being targeted heavily. I want to. This is the whole equation with Hopkins and his slow start. Evans. We talked about it on the show yesterday. I buy into that. Keenan Allen's too good. The targets are too consistent for Keenan Allen not to give you that game eventually. And if it doesn't happen against a defense that ranks 31st against wide receivers, maybe then you go cry in the corner. Yeah, it's it's really a, a matter of will the Raiders be able to score on the Chargers uh, easily, make this a, a higher scoring affair or not. Obviously, a divisional game. These teams know each other pretty well. Vegas has set the line right in the middle where – you know, it's it's tough. Do you think because this could be a high scoring game? This could also be a very low scoring game. Thankfully, Josh Jacobs has been the the engine for the Raiders, and this is a winnable matchup on the ground for for Jacobs. He could do some serious work against the Chargers, who are giving up twenty three point one fantasy points per game to running backs. A wild stat here. Just, sorry, I got to pivot wild. back. Pivot back to the Chargers. This is Paul Charchi and good friend of the show tweeted this out. No Chargers wide receiver has scored a touchdown in their last five games. This is like that's that's pos positive regression is coming. A bounce back is coming for Keenan Allen. Yeah, I feel like I would have said that after three games. <laughs> yeah, and then four games. But all but the, you're all right. the more it reason should, it's it should closer. It should yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's definitely. <laughs> oh closer. man, the matchup is the is fantasy brain. Fantastic. Hunter Henry is must start. Must start. Uh, Darren the, Waller must start. The Raiders were terrible against tight end last year. They have kept up their 30th against tight They're end consistent. this year. And so th that's that's a weakness for them and a strength for the Chargers, which is great news for my Phillip Rivers start. All right. And we did get an update on Evan Ingram during the course of the show. An MRI is being sent to Dr. Robert Anderson for a second opinion. A little bit of a sore foot, but now his status for this upcoming week is uncertain. I'm, I've been disappointed. Obviously, injuries has played a big part for Evan Ingram. But one of the areas, too, that I expected him to kind of lead the league in is that yard after catch number at, at tight end. You know, he's up in that – he's in the upper echelon there, but he's not leading the way. Kind of a inconsistent year for him. And now fantasy owners wonder, are they going to be able to rely on him for the playoff push? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's tough. You never. There are certain doctors you just don't want to hear their names spoken well, you know, this yeah. is one of them? Yeah. Yes, Robert Anderson and James Andrews. Exactly. Mr. Stay away from my players. <laughs> All <laughs> right, we want to thank today's uh, – we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, Kirk Cousins, a signed Kirk Cousins jersey. Ooh. $92.14 yesterday. You like that? Yeah, I yes. – inadvertently, I've posted a lot of Kirk Cousins stats recently. Just because he's at the top of a bunch of different... Here, I wanted to read them for you. Number one in percentage of 20-plus passing yard plays. Number one in passer rating since week five. Number one in completion percentage when pressured. Number one in passer rating versus the blitz. And number one in yards per attempt. He doesn't even have the excuses built in when you're throwing for a high completion percentage of not driving the ball downfield or any of those things. So he's been NFL-wise very, very impressive uh, but a signed jersey yesterday, $92. Use the code BALLERS. I think that's going to do it for us, gentlemen. It will. Our waivers run in just a minute. 
Oh. I am, I'm very excited to see it. I hope all of your waiver extravaganzas went well. Foot Clan, we'll see you tomorrow with the matchups and the starts of the week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. And Foot Clan, a reminder, Navy Federal is proud to serve over 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD veterans, and their families. You'll receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org slash footballers for more information or call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app. Message and data rates may apply.